Hey, good morning. Have you ever wondered how to hear God and know, know and learn his will for your life? Or have you ever wondered why you're not hearing God? Let's talk today about how to clear the channels. And I don't mean like channeling, uh, you know, demonic entities or anything like that. But what are you listening to? What are you looking at? What are you hearing every day? What are you feeling? What are you going through that might cause you to hear in a wrong way? I am Crystal Roy with the Kingdom Exchange. And I'm here to teach you how to exchange the things that are off for the things that are on for the Kingdom of God. And I want to share a quick story about my assistant, Stacy. Um, she's a great assistant. She does everything with excellence. And I was really surprised one day when I copied her with something, I can't remember if it was to one of the clients or it was to the, one of the cross sale agents. And I said something along the lines of, Hey, Stacy, can you go ahead and take care of this? And she sent me a private email back saying, Hey, Crystal, I don't appreciate you. Da, 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 like basically throwing me in front of the bus. Well, I was surprised because, um, I ha that's not what I had done. That was not my heart at all. I was just saying, hey, Stacy's going to take care of that. And if she hasn't done that for you, you know, she's going to do it. So I called her. I said, hey, Stacy, I wanted to talk to you about that email that you sent me. And she said, okay. And I said, well, you know, I, I saw what I said. I saw what you said back to me privately. And I was just curious about what it was about what I did that caused you to go to the most extreme response. Like, I don't appreciate you throwing me under the bus, right? Because that's not at all what had happened. And it was something simple <clears throat> and could be very easily corrected. And I wasn't blaming Stacy. I was just saying, hey, um, Stacy was to get that over to you and whatever. So she said something very mature and responsible. She said, I'm sorry, I just, I just haven't been feeling well. And, you know, because of that, I guess I just, I, I took the wrong conclusion, right? <clears throat> now, she's been working for me for three and a half years, so we know each other pretty well. And she has been through a lot. And I like to think I've been supportive. Um, I try to be supportive. Um, but, you know, when we are trying to support someone, maybe we don't give the support that they need at the moment because of our point of view. So this Witness Wednesday is about changing your point of view so you can hear. <clears throat> you can hear from God. You can see what he's telling you. And you can open up that pathway to hear from your father. Because if you don't know what your assignment is, how can you complete it? So let's talk about that. We're going to talk about how to walk in the will of God and knowing God's will. <clears throat> and the way we do that is, you know, um, we've got to know our Bible. We've got to know the Word. The Bible is Christ in print. So if you took everything about Christ and put it in print, the whole earth could not contain the books written to help us explore His heart, His mind, His will, His emotions, His plan for us. <clears throat> but we do have the written word, to guide us. So let's talk about Romans 12, 2. It says, do not conform to the patterns of this world. Okay, there are patterns that we see that we should not conform to. And there are certain patterns that we should conform to. Like from a business point of view, to do excellence in business means you have to do these things, right? It means you have to prospect if you're in sales. You have to follow up, follow up, follow up. You have to serve without return often, right? You have to lead, then you have to close. So that is a pattern of success for business, but it's relationship based. It's not my need based. Oh, I need, I need a house payment this month. I've got to go sell a house. No, this is relationship based. There are good patterns and that is a pattern. That might even be a pattern from heaven, but we use it in this world. And then there are patterns of the world that are destructive. <clears throat> and that's where we get off track. That's where we no longer are able to hear from God. So let's hear what the Lord is saying to us. Do not conform 
to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So what you put into your mind affects you. And it either gives you the ability to prove God's will or it dulls your ability to know God's will. There are so many things that we put into our minds that we need to be careful of. Excuse me, I need a drink of water. <clears throat> what you put into your mind affects your behavior. What you believe about yourself affects your behavior. I want to share an exercise that I saw happen in, in a, an event with a group of people. And we were all asked to take <clears throat> two minutes to share about ourselves. So we had about five people in the group, and I knew three of the five people, <clears throat> so I knew their stories. So when we did our first round, let's say Susie. Susie shared, blah, 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 can't do anything, this, that, and the other thing happened to me, and here's where I am in my life. I mean, we were all there to be more successful, but some of us didn't have anything. And Oh, it was such a sad sack story because that was what was in her mind. And I know some people indicate the mind is here in the belly. We're going to use this for mind and this for spirit. And then the leader of the session said, okay, now I don't want you to speak from your head. I want to speak from your heart, from your gut heart area. So we each did the two minutes. And this time Susie had a completely different story. So I want you to make a commitment to yourself for the month of January to ask yourself, where are you living? Are you living from your head? Those facts of life that are uncomfortable and maybe actually wrong. Maybe you're believing the wrong thing. Like, um, I, you know, your inner critic says, I always mess up. I can never do anything right. Why am I even trying? Your outer critic says, that person, you know, is always mean to me, it will never accept me, is I'm always going to be threatened by them, <clears throat> right? So I want you to, with every thought, take it captive and make it obedient to Christ. That's what the Bible says. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So if we were in a war, and when we were in a war, revolutionary war, civil war, when captives were taken, sometimes they put on you know, the other regiment's uniform and they appeared to be on your side, but they weren't. So we must always, when we take something captive, we have to identify it, you know, if we take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ, we ask, does this thought measure up to what Christ says about me? Does this thought measure up to what Christ says about this situation, this relationship, this commitment that I have? And if the words are no, they don't, then you have to execute. You have to execute. You have to kill that thought and not let it remain. So I want to ask you, to consider what you're doing with your mind that is affecting your behavior. I will tell you that there is a certain fascination that is not revelation. Fascination is not revelation. I, I actually have permission to share this. I know a man who lost his whole family because of his fascination with something. It was a certain sin. It was not his own sin. But after listening to podcasts and other videos for nearly a year about this particular sin and high levels of detail about it, um, 
when his wife went to him and said, hey, if you have to listen to that, can you listen to that in a way that I don't have to hear it because it's affecting my sex life and our sex life with each other. What he heard was, you can't listen to that in our home. That's not what she said. Her heart was, if the Lord is leading you to that, for that to be something that you're to pursue as ministry, then can you listen to that in a way I don't have to hear it because it's negatively impacting her sexual response. But because he didn't want to hear her point of view and he was, I'm, I'm just going to call it, operating in pride, he was operating in fascination with this topic. And the reason I believe it was fascination and not revelation is because when God gives you revelation, he will cover you. You will have prayer partners to accomplish something. You will be partnering with that ministry and there will be fruit. There was none of that. There was only fascination. Um, and some of these, excuse me, conspiracy theories, and don't get me wrong, I believe a lot of the cons conspiracy theories are not conspiracy theories. I believe there are things that we are going to find out in the future are 100% at work in the world. But I'm talking about the extreme things that will lead you to go to Bob Jones' group and drink Kool-Aid. I'm talking about that level. And you have to be able to discern. But if you are fascinated and are not covered by God through prayer partners and a watchman on your wall, it is not revelation. It's fascination. If you're not partnered with a ministry to accomplish the purposes of God for that thing, it's just fascination. It's not revelation. But I hear many say, that I don't hear from God. I don't dream like you dream, Crystal. So we need to ask ourselves, why are we not hearing from God? Now, it's pretty clear, for example, that you know there's certain things we do that we see have an immediate cross effect, right? So if, um, if a husband is looking at porn, is he going to be able to see what God is showing him in dreams and visions? I say no. And we do know it, there's, you know, at least 50% that we hear of even the men in the church who are captured by porn. That doesn't mean these men are bad. It means that they've been captured by the enemy and we must pray them out. They have been taken captive. Jesus came to set the captives free. And we see, for example, in the Bible, the woman caught in the very act of sin. Jesus didn't throw her out. He said, go and sin no more. He said, where are your accusers? Because those men had left. He who was without sin cast the first stone. You know, we can't cast any stones. But our job is to see and discern and to pray and to give wise counsel. And the Bible says, ye who are more spiritual should correct the others gently. But if you are not a woman or man open to correction, you're going to become offended. You're going to lose everything. So when this man lost his entire family, um, what had happened was he actually did something that another adult in the family saw and knowing, you know, nearly a year of hearing this other stuff of um, sexual sin kind of thing, saw the same behaviors in this man. And instead of this man saying, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I totally see how what I've been listening to could make you feel that what I did was the same thing, but that's not at all what was happening. And I'm going to watch myself. That's not going to ever happen again. That's not what happened, though. This man got so bent out of shape that he left his family because of um, a mistaken accusation. And I'm going to say false accusation. It wasn't true. But it was mistaken based on months of, of knowing that this man was listening to this type of thing and then saw him start to behave in that same pattern. 
But we have to be humble. We have to say, oh my gosh, is that what that looked like? Let me not do that anymore. And we all need to say, you know, make the call. Hey, what, what was it that made you go to the worst scenario, worst case scenario? Um, for example, when I called my assistant and said, hey, you know, what made you think that I was throwing you under the bus? Oh, she said, you know, I, I just wasn't feeling well. And I just, I drew the wrong, bad conclusion. Because we've known each other, right? We've known each other. Um, we've worked together. Um, and it's a relationship where I can say, hey, are you available to do this today? Can you do it in the next couple of hours? And she says, yes. And then for the rest of the day, we're basically just talking <laughs> or texting as if we just saw each other two minutes ago. So we've got a close personal relationship. So because of that close personal relationship, I have a bridge where I can say, hey, I'm just calling because of the email, right? What made you think of the, you know, the worst possible scenario with this? And that's what we need to do. Whenever we are accused of something, especially falsely, I mean, if you're not falsely accused, you need to own up, right? Um, but if you're not accused of something that you really need to handle, then you need to be able to call that other person and say, hey, is it okay if I ask you, <clears throat> you know, why you drew the worst possible conclusion about this? And then that person can say, well, because I've, I've heard you listen to these types of things for almost a year. And then I saw your behavior start to match what you've been listening to almost every, you know, spare minute that you've had. So it looked concerning to me, right? Humility says, hey, can you tell me why you drew this conclusion? Pride says, you know, I'm out of here. Um, so let's not walk in pride. But let's identify. Let's take every thought captive. If I think, hmm. You know, I'm never going to work with Stacy again because she's falsely accused me. I'm just damaging myself. I'm operating in pride. I'm not operating in wisdom. I'm not willing to be submissive to Stacy, who might be saying, Crystal, you got a problem and we need to talk about it. And we do. Um, we actually have a monthly check in where, hey, what went great this month? What do we need to improve on? Is there anything outstanding that's bothering you we didn't talk about? And, um, you know, that's great for marriage, too. I've done that in my marriage. Hey, what, anything this week left over from, you know, what we, um, what we had an exchange about? I mean, we even started that before we got married. What, is there anything left over this week we need to talk about? And as long as you both stay willing to confront your issues like that, instead of, you know, saying, well, you know, hearing the wrong thing, right? Then you will have a very successful relationship. So let's talk about dedicating our eyes, what we see, our ears, what we hear, <clears throat> our nose, what we smell, our mouth, what we taste and eat, what we say, what we talk about. And just ask ourselves, um, what are we looking at? What am I looking at every day? There's nothing wrong with, you know, some, some rest and a little bit of entertainment, but not all entertainment all the time. For years, for a decade, um, we've not had cable. Because I saw things that sh I shouldn't pay to bring into my house. We shouldn't pay to bring into our house. And it was part of our diet. And we got rid of it, right? So there may be some things like that that you'll have to put in as guidelines or, you know, that post, right? Um, to say we're not going further than this. And I just want to share that right now is the time for me to get my car inspected. So I have to pay taxes. I have to get my tag renewed, get a sticker. So my car has to go in for an inspection, make sure it's in good working, working order, that it's not contributing to pollution for our environment, and that it's safe for me to drive on the street for myself and other drivers. So I want to challenge you. <clears throat> now, this is an annual event that we do with cars, and yours might be a different month. Mine happens to be January. But I want to challenge you. I want you to get an inspection. I want you to inspect for the next week what you're listening to. I want you to inspect what you're looking at. 
I want you to inspect what where your nose is taking you, right? Where the nose goes, the man follows. I want you to inspect what you're eating. Is it bringing health to your body? Is it bringing life to your body? I want you to inspect what you're tasting. I'll just spend a couple of minutes looking at this. I'll just spend a couple of minutes listening to that. I want to tell you, I saw <clears throat> one of my client's daughters, she's probably eight, was wearing an ACDC shirt. Well, they're very talented. Most of their songs are sexual. And, you know, back in the day when I was growing up, we didn't have Google. I graduated without the benefit of Google. But, uh, you know, there were misheard lyrics. And there were lyrics that honestly, you know, as a sexually pure person, I didn't know what those things meant. And as an adult, I hear it and I go, holy cow, I can't believe I used to sing along with that. And so I asked her, you know, what ACDC song is your favorite? And she really didn't know. And I think this was probably mom and dad's choice of a shirt anyway. Uh, but I thought about it and I thought, you know, Thunderstruck has some really great chords. It's a powerful song. And my late husband used, ACDC was his group. So I've heard all, I've been to concerts, you know, all that kind of stuff with him um, supporting as a wife. Um, but I, I looked up the lyrics for Thunderstruck. And for the most part, you know, the whole thing is sexual. Um, but is the music good? Yes. But I have to decide, what am I putting in? Right? So I made a different choice. You know, ACDC, like I said, is very talented. And I pray, I've prayed for them for decades. And um, I, have to, I have to ask myself, what are you looking at today? What are you tasting. Okay. So my big thing is, is, you know, not porn or anything like that. And Satan can't get me that way because I have no interest. But a chocolate cake girl. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, but just have one piece, right? Or if the Lord has asked you something specific, like he told me no more caffeine, <gasps> that means no more caffeine. But does that mean a little bit of caffeine? Oh, it means no more caffeine. So let's obey. Then, right, back to Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. So ask yourself, what pattern am I in? You know, do I always do something on Sunday? Do I always do something on Monday that's not really from God's heart? Do I do something in my workplace? Do I do something as a habit when I'm feeling stressed? Do I do something as a habit when I'm feeling needy? Do I do th something as a habit when I'm feeling rejected? Do I do something as a habit when I'm feeling unseen and unheard as a pattern, right? So let's look at the patterns of behavior. But in order to do that, you have to inspect yourself, right? And ask Holy Spirit, <clears throat> search me and show me any hurtful ways, right? Any wrong thoughts so that I don't defile many. But do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing, the renewing of your mind. So how do you renew? I'm going to renew my car's um, inspection. It means it has to be inspected. Anything has to be corrected. And then it gets a stamp of approval after I've paid. So you may, you may have to pay something, right? Then, so when that's done, when you've renewed your mind, when you've made it new again with the Word of God, so ask the Lord to tell you any thoughts or patterns, patterns of behavior, any points of view that you have that are not his, and ask him to correct you. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now this doesn't, in my opinion, mean his good will, comma, there's a second will, his pleasing will. No, we want to walk in God's perfect will. So next week, we want to talk about after doing this inspection, we want to dedicate our temples, our mind, will, emotions, eyes, what we smell, what we hear, what we taste, taste and see the Lord is good, what we do with our bodies, how we move through space with our bodies, and, and really make some commitments so that we will be able to prove, test and approve God's will. 
and then we are going to talk about how to hear from God through dreams, through visions, and just my little cheat sheet here from Michael Fickus, <clears throat> how to hear from God as a seer, how to hear from God through your heart, how to hear from God through your mind, your renewed mind is the one who, that will hear, and through your body. And I can't wait. I'm so excited to share these things with you in more detail as we move along. But this week, I'd like just for you to have a commitment to inspect yourself. What are you doing with the TV? What are you doing with the radio? What are you doing with your free time? What are you doing with your voice? What are you doing with your wife, with your husband, with your children, with your stepchildren? What are you doing with your job, with your boss? What are you doing with your future? Because your future starts today. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the wisdom and revelation that Jesus has released to us through his word. And Father, through you and your will, that you download your will and your assignment into us. And Lord, for these saints who are wanting to exchange this earthly kingdom for your kingdom, to walk in your kingdom seated from heavenly places and to proclaim on earth as it is in heaven for their lives for the purpose of fulfilling your will for us, Father. I bless them. So I bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you and give you peace. And may you always, always, always sense his Holy Spirit within you. Surrender to correction and will to do his will. Until next week, have a great week. Bye-bye.